d'Huez. One of the most iconic climbs in cycling history. It's given us moments like this. We wondered whether this would happen. Bogacar once more, trying to shock, trying to surprise. And here it comes, and Tom Pitcock is the man who accelerates. A shake of the head, but he better believe it. Pitcock wins on the iconic climb of Alpe d'Huez. The famous 21 hairpins, steep gradients, and legendary status that this very mountain holds makes it one of the most ridden climbs in the entire world. And it's a climb you have to do. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you everything you need to know so that you can conquer this monster. This is a climb I've been lucky enough to go to many times. Not only to ride it, but also to be a spectator in the middle of the carnage, soaking up all the atmosphere the Tour de France brings. It's a climb that is steeped in cycling history. It was first used for the Tour de France back in 1952, and it's been one of the most popular climbs of the race. It attracts an insane crowd, and if you're lucky enough to ride it in peak season, that crowd will be cheering you on too. Alpe d'Huez is situated in southeastern France, and if you look at accommodation, then I'd highly recommend the top of the mountain in the village of Alpe d'Huez, which offers beautiful hotels and B&Bs. But if you're looking at riding to the climb, then the village of Le Bourg d'Oison also offers some nice hotels and B&Bs that are crucially bike friendly. The closest airport to Le Bourg d'Oison is Grenoble International Airport. That's a little over an hour's drive away. But there's also Lyon, jean and Geneva Airport. If you're staying in the center of Le Bourg d'Oison, it's a 15 kilometer ride from there to the mountain. Now, a lot of riders tend to use the mountain as part of a longer ride, but there's also some epic climbs that surround Le Bourg d'Oison like Le Col de la Croix de Fer, Le Col de la Glandon, and Le Col de Seren, meaning you will probably want to add a few more days to your cycling holiday. You should also remember that you're cycling in the high mountains, so thinking carefully about your clothing is also going to be imperative. You not only want to keep warm just in case the weather changes, but also on those long descents. So what's it actually like to ride? The approach to the climb is fast and on big roads, which is absolutely perfect for a warm up if you're coming from the Ozon Valley. Now, the first thing you'll meet is a sign on the right, which is warning you of exactly what's to come. You start the climb at 737 meters and the first bend you meet is bend number 21. The early stages of the climb are tough and steep. Now, the biggest mistake most people make is going too hard too early. This is a climb you want to pace, trust me. Now the section from Lagarde to Ben 16 are some of the toughest sections of the mountain, with an average gradient of 11%. If you choose to ride this climb in peak season, then there's a high chance it's gonna be incredibly hot. So staying hydrated is gonna be absolutely key. Now there is a chance to fill up your bottles at Ben 16 where there's a roadside fountain. Now after this, it has 200 meters where the gradient eases. Now this is your opportunity to get your breath back. Don't sit on your lorries because the gradient starts to bite at Ben 15 again at 1,025 meters high. The next bend you'll meet is Ben 14, and this is when you'll ride past the monument dedicated to Joaquim Augustino, a pro cyclist that won the Alpe d'Huez stage back in 1979 and won it by three minutes and 40 seconds. And it was back in 1979 that the race went up this climb twice. Hopefully by now you would have found your climbing rhythm and bends 13 to eight snake their way under the shadow of dominating rock faces. And it leads you all the way up to the most famous bend of all, bend number seven, more commonly known as Dutch Corner, the loudest corner on the mountain. It gets overrun with Dutch fans and it gets covered in orange. Now the reason the Dutch have taken such ownership over this very bend 
is because eight out of the first 14 stage winners on Outdoors were all Dutch. Once you leave Dutch Corner and emerge out of the woods, you'll soon find yourself entering into Uwe's village. But beware, there is a false summit. Now you still have over four kilometers to ride through the upper meadows where you'll see the resort in the distance and you'll feel like you're in touching distance for some time before you reach it. Once you are through the Giuseppe Guarini hairpin, named number one, you then head past the cycling souvenir shop, through the tunnel and you have 1500 meters to go and one hairpin. At the last hairpin, you have 1000 meters to go and this will take you to the finish of the official Strava segment. You have 1000 meters and the finish line is awaiting you. Now there are places to refuel at Uwe's village, but I highly suggest you make it to the top of the climb before you do your refueling. There's plenty of cafes and bars, and I have to say, there's nothing better than finishing off an epic climb with a cold Coke looking over the insane view. Now what is the best time of year to take on this climb? Now this is a very popular road. And in the winter months, there's a lot of cars and coaches taking skiers up the mountain and then they get replaced during the summer months with walkers and mountain bikers. Now there is a way to beat the rush by getting up really early and taking on the climb. There is something really magical about having the climb to yourself on a really early morning. But what I would say is if you make it to the top before 8 a.m., then there's probably not gonna be a cafe open to get that nice cold Coke. Spring and autumn are probably the quietest on the mountain, but I would say make sure you bring enough clothing because you could get stuck in some cold weather. Personally, I love nothing more than the atmosphere of a big event. And if you're doing this climb close to when the Tour de France is coming to town, then you're not gonna get the quietest road, but on the flip side, you're gonna get the atmosphere that the Tour de France brings. Big crowds and plenty of wheels to sit on. And also, there are loads of professional photographers that are littered up the mountain so you can get that money shot and show your friends you conquered the beast. When you reach the top of the mountain, not only are you rewarded with beautiful views and lovely cafes, you're also rewarded with the way down, the descent. 21 bends on beautifully smooth tarmac. I'm gonna say, I absolutely love this descent and there's nothing that comes close to it. The record of this climb is Marco Pantani, who did it back in 1997 with a time of 37 minutes and 35 seconds. And the current Strava segment record holder is Sepp Kuss, who averaged 21.2 kilometers per hour and get this, an average wattage of 371 watts. He did it in a time of 39 minutes and 21 seconds. Now the current QOM record holder is Illy Gardner, who did it in a time of 48 minutes and 25 seconds back in 2021. Now there's been a staggering 32,500 recorded rides on this very climb. And the next one is gonna be you. That's it for the epic climb of Alp Duen, full of its history, and I hope it's given you a breakdown of how to actually approach this climb and all you need to conquer it. Let me know in the comment section below if you enjoyed, if it was helpful, and give it that big thumbs up button if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video.